A Cartesian coordinate system is a coordinate system that specifies each point uniquely in a plane by a set of numerical coordinates, which are the signed distances to the point from two fixed perpendicular oriented lines, measured in the same unit of length. Each reference line is called a coordinate axis or just axis plural axes of the system, and the point where they meet is its origin, at ordered pair 0, 0. The coordinates can also be defined as the positions of the perpendicular projections of the point onto the two axes, expressed as signed distances from the origin. One can use the same principle to specify the position of any point in three-dimensional space by three Cartesian coordinates, its signed distances to three mutually perpendicular planes or, equivalently, by its perpendicular projection onto three mutually perpendicular lines. In general, n Cartesian coordinates an element of real n space specify the point in an n-dimensional Euclidean space for any dimension n. These coordinates are equal, up to sign, to distances from the point to n mutually perpendicular hyperplanes. The invention of Cartesian coordinates in the 17th century by René Descartes Latinized name, Cartesius revolutionized mathematics by providing the first systematic link between Euclidean geometry and algebra. Using the Cartesian coordinate system, geometric shapes such as curves can be described by Cartesian equations, algebraic equations involving the coordinates of the points lying on the shape. For example, a circle of radius 2, centered at the origin of the plane, may be described as the set of all points whose coordinates x and y satisfy the equation x2 plus y2 equals 4. Cartesian coordinates are the foundation of analytic geometry, and provide enlightening geometric interpretations for many other branches of mathematics, such as linear algebra, complex analysis, differential geometry, multivariate calculus, group theory and more. A familiar example is the concept of the graph of a function. Cartesian coordinates are also essential tools for most applied disciplines that deal with geometry, including astronomy, physics, engineering and many more. They are the most common coordinate system used in computer graphics, computer-aided geometric design and other geometry-related data processing. History The adjective Cartesian refers to the French mathematician and philosopher René Descartes who published this idea in 1637. It was independently discovered by Pierre de Fermat, who also worked in three dimensions, although Fermat did not publish the discovery. The French cleric Nicole Oresme, used constructions similar to Cartesian coordinates well before the time of Descartes and Fermat. Both Descartes and Fermat used a single axis in their treatments and have a variable length measured in reference to this axis. The concept of using a pair of axes was introduced later, after Descartes' La Géométrie was translated into Latin in 1649 by Franz van Schooten and his students. These commentators introduced several concepts while trying to clarify the ideas contained in Descartes' work. The development of the Cartesian coordinate system would play a fundamental role in the development of the calculus by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. The two coordinate description of the plane was later generalized into the concept of vector spaces. Many other coordinate systems have been developed since Descartes, such as the polar coordinates for the plane, and the spherical and cylindrical coordinates for three dimensional space. <laughs> description one dimension Choosing a Cartesian coordinate system for a one-dimensional space that is for a straight line involves choosing a point O of the line the origin a unit of length and an orientation for the line An orientation chooses which of the two half lines determined by O is the positive and which is negative we then say that the line is oriented or points from the negative half towards the positive half then each point P of the line can be specified by its distance from O, taken with a plus or minus sign depending on which half line contains P. A line with a chosen Cartesian system is called a number line. Every real number has a unique location on the line. Conversely, every point on the line can be interpreted as a number in an ordered continuum such as the real numbers. Topic: Two dimensions. 
A Cartesian coordinate system in two dimensions also called a rectangular coordinate system or an orthogonal coordinate system is defined by an ordered pair of perpendicular lines axes, a single unit of length for both axes, and a orientation for each axis. The point where the axes meet is taken as the origin for both, thus turning each axis into a number line. For any point P, a line is drawn through P perpendicular to each axis, and the position where it meets the axis is interpreted as a number. The two numbers, in that chosen order, are the Cartesian coordinates of P. The reverse construction allows one to determine the point P given its coordinates. The first and second coordinates are called the abscissa and the ordinate of P, respectively, and the point where the axes meet is called the origin of the coordinate system. The coordinates are usually written as two numbers in parentheses, in that order, separated by a comma, as in 3, minus 10.5. Thus the origin has coordinates 0, 0, and the points on the positive half axis, one unit away from the origin, have coordinates 1, 0, and 0, 1. In mathematics, physics, and engineering, the first axis is usually defined or depicted as horizontal and oriented to the right, and the second axis is vertical and oriented upwards. However, in some computer graphics contexts, the ordinate axis may be oriented downwards, the origin is often labeled O, and the two coordinates are often denoted by the letters X and Y, or X and Y. The axis may then be referred to as the X axis and Y axis. The choices of letters come from the original convention, which is to use the latter part of the alphabet to indicate unknown values. The first part of the alphabet was used to designate known values. A Euclidean plane with a chosen Cartesian coordinate system is called a Cartesian plane. In a Cartesian plane one can define canonical representatives of certain geometric figures, such as the unit circle with radius equal to the length unit, and center at the origin, the unit square whose diagonal has endpoints at 0, 0 and 1, 1, the unit hyperbola, and so on. The two axes divide the plane into four right angles, called quadrant. The quadrants may be named or numbered in various ways, but the quadrant where all coordinates are positive is usually called the first quadrant. If the coordinates of a point are x, y, then its distances from the x-axis and from the y-axis are y, and x, respectively, where denotes the absolute value of a number. Three dimensions A Cartesian coordinate system for a three-dimensional space consists of an ordered triplet of lines the axes that go through a common point the origin, and are pairwise perpendicular, a orientation for each axis, and a single unit of length for all three axes. As in the two-dimensional case, each axis becomes a number line. For any point P of space, one considers a plane through P perpendicular to each coordinate axis, and interprets the point where that plane cuts the axis as a number. The Cartesian coordinates of P are those three numbers, in the chosen order. The reverse construction determines the point P given its three coordinates. Alternatively, each coordinate of a point P can be taken as the distance from P to the plane defined by the other two axes, with the sign determined by the orientation of the corresponding axis. Each pair of axes defines a coordinate plane. These planes divide space into eight trihedra, called octants. The coordinates are usually written as three numbers or algebraic formulas surrounded by parentheses and separated by commas, as in 3, minus 2.5, 1, or t, u plus v, pi, 2. Thus, the origin has coordinates 0, 0, 0, and the unit points on the three axes are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. There are no standard names for the coordinates in the three axes however, the terms abscissa, ordinate and applicate are sometimes used. The coordinates are often denoted by the letters x, y, and z, or x, y, and z. The axes may then be referred to as the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, respectively. Then the coordinate planes can be referred to as the xy-plane, yz-plane, and xz-plane. In mathematics, physics, and engineering contexts, the first two axes are often defined or depicted as horizontal, with the third axis pointing up. In that case the third coordinate may be called height or altitude. The orientation is usually chosen so that the 90-degree angle from the first axis to the second axis looks counterclockwise when seen from the point 0, 0, 1, a convention that is commonly called the right-hand rule. <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Higher dimensions. Since Cartesian coordinates are unique and non-ambiguous, the points of a Cartesian plane can be identified with pairs of real numbers, that is with the Cartesian product r 2 equals r times r display style math b r caret 2 equals math b r times math b r where r display style math b r is the set of all reals in the same way the points in any euclidean space of dimension n be identified with the tuples lists of n real numbers that is with the cartesian product r n display style math b r caret n topic generalizations The concept of Cartesian coordinates generalizes to allow axes that are not perpendicular to each other, and or different units along each axis. In that case, each coordinate is obtained by projecting the point onto one axis along a direction that is parallel to the other axis or, in general, to the hyperplane defined by all the other axes. In such an oblique coordinate system the computations of distances and angles must be modified from that in standard Cartesian systems, and many standard formulas such as the Pythagorean formula for the distance do not hold see a fine plane. <laughs> Notations and conventions The Cartesian coordinates of a point are usually written in parentheses and separated by commas, as in 10, 5 or 3, 5, 7. The origin is often labeled with the capital letter O in analytic geometry. Unknown or generic coordinates are often denoted by the letters x, y in the plane, and x, y, z in three-dimensional space. This custom comes from a convention of algebra, which uses letters near the end of the alphabet for unknown values such as were the coordinates of points in many geometric problems, and letters near the beginning for given quantities. These conventional names are often used in other domains, such as physics and engineering, although other letters may be used. For example, in a graph showing how a pressure varies with time, the graph coordinates may be denoted P and T. Each axis is usually named after the coordinate which is measured along it, so one says the x-axis, the y-axis, the t-axis, etc. Another common convention for coordinate naming is to use subscripts, as x1, x2, xn for the n-coordinates in an n-dimensional space, especially when n is greater than 3 or unspecified. Some authors prefer the numbering x0, x1, xn-1. These notations are especially advantageous in computer programming, by storing the coordinates of a point as an array, instead of a record, the subscript can serve to index the coordinates. In mathematical illustrations of two-dimensional Cartesian systems, the first coordinate traditionally called the abscissa is measured along a horizontal axis, oriented from left to right. The second coordinate the ordinate is then measured along a vertical axis, usually oriented from bottom to top. Young children learning the Cartesian system, commonly learn the order to read the values before cementing the x, y, and z-axis concepts, by starting with 2D mnemonics e.g. walk along the hall then up the stairs akin to straight across the x-axis then up vertically along the y-axis. Computer graphics and image processing, however, often use a coordinate system with the y-axis oriented downwards on the computer display. This convention developed in the 1960s or earlier from the way that images were originally stored in display buffers. For three-dimensional systems, a convention is to portray the x-y plane horizontally, with the z-axis added to represent height positive up. Furthermore, there is a convention to orient the x-axis toward the viewer, biased either to the right or left. If a diagram 3D projection or 2D perspective drawing shows the X and Y axis horizontally and vertically, respectively, then the Z axis should be shown pointing out of the page towards the viewer or camera. In such a 2D diagram of a 3D coordinate system, the Z axis would appear as a line or ray pointing down and to the left or down and to the right, depending on the presumed viewer or camera perspective. In any diagram or display, the orientation of the three axes, as a whole, is arbitrary. However, the orientation of the axes relative to each other should always comply with the right-hand rule, unless specifically stated otherwise. 
All laws of physics and math assume this right-handedness, which ensures consistency. For 3D diagrams, the names abscissa and ordinate are rarely used for x and y, respectively. When they are, the z-coordinate is sometimes called the applicate. The words abscissa, ordinate and applicate are sometimes used to refer to coordinate axes rather than the coordinate values. Topic: <laughs> Quadrants and octants. The axes of a two-dimensional Cartesian system divide the plane into four infinite regions called quadrants, each bounded by two half axes. These are often numbered from first to fourth and denoted by Roman numerals i, where the signs of the two coordinates are i plus plus two minus plus three minus minus and i v plus minus. When the axes are drawn according to the mathematical custom, the numbering goes counterclockwise, starting from the upper right northeast quadrant. Similarly, a three-dimensional Cartesian system defines a division of space into eight regions or octants according to the signs of the coordinates of the points. The convention used for naming a specific octant is to list its signs, e.g. plus 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 or minus plus minus. The generalization of the quadrant and octant to an arbitrary number of dimensions is the orthant, and a similar naming system applies. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Cartesian formulae for the plane. Topic. Distance between two points The Euclidean distance between two points of the plane with Cartesian coordinates x 1 y 1 display style x underscore 1 y underscore 1 and x 2 y 2 Display style x underscore two y underscore two is d equals x two minus x one two plus y two minus y one two Display style d equals sqrt x underscore two x underscore one caret two plus y underscore two y underscore one caret two. This is the Cartesian version of Pythagoras's theorem. In three-dimensional space, the distance between points x one y one z one Display style x underscore one y underscore one z underscore one and x two y two z two display style x underscore two y underscore two z underscore two is d equals x two minus x one two plus Y two minus Y one two plus Z two minus Z one two Display style D equals SQRT x underscore two x underscore one carrot two plus Y underscore two Y underscore one carrot two plus Z underscore two Z underscore one carrot two which can be obtained by two consecutive applications of Pythagoras theorem. Topic Euclidean transformations The Euclidean transformations or Euclidean motions are the bijective mappings of points of the Euclidean plane to themselves which preserve distances between points. There are four types of these mappings also called isometries, translations, rotations, reflections and glide reflections. Translation 
Translating a set of points of the plane, preserving the distances and directions between them, is equivalent to adding a fixed pair of numbers a, b, to the Cartesian coordinates of every point in the set. That is, if the original coordinates of a point are x, y, after the translation they will be x y equals x plus a y plus b display style x y equals x plus a y plus b topic rotation to rotate a figure counterclockwise around the origin by some angle theta display style theta is equivalent to replacing every point with coordinates x y by the point with coordinates x y where x equals x cos theta minus y sin theta display style x equals x cos theta y sin theta y equals x sin theta plus y cos theta display style y equals x sin theta plus y cos theta thus x y equals x cos theta minus y sin theta x sin theta plus y cos theta display style x y equals x cos theta y sin theta x sin theta plus y cos theta topic reflection if x y are the cartesian coordinates of a point then minus x y are the coordinates of its reflection across the second coordinate axis the y axis as if that line were a mirror likewise x minus y are the coordinates of its reflection across the first coordinate axis the x axis in more generality reflection across a line through the origin making an angle theta display style theta with the x axis is equivalent to replacing every point with coordinates x y by the point with coordinates x y where x equals x cos 2 theta plus y sin 2 theta display style x equals x cos 2 theta plus y sin 2 theta y equals x sin 2 theta minus y cos 2 theta display style y equals x sin 2 theta y cos 2 theta thus x y equals x cos 2 theta plus y sin 2 theta x sin 2 theta minus y cos 2 theta Display style x y equals x cos two theta plus y sin two theta x sin two theta y cos two theta Topic. Glide reflection A glide reflection is the composition of a reflection across a line followed by a translation in the direction of that line. It can be seen that the order of these operations does not matter the translation can come first, followed by the reflection. Topic. General matrix form of the transformations These Euclidean transformations of the plane can all be described in a uniform way by using matrices. The result x y display style x y of applying a Euclidean transformation to a point 
x y display style x y is given by the formula x y equals x y a plus b display style x y equals x y a plus b where a is a 2 times 2 orthogonal matrix and b equals b1 b2 is an arbitrary ordered pair of numbers that is x equals x a 11 plus y a 21 plus b 1 Display style x equals x a underscore eleven plus y underscore twenty one plus b underscore one y equals x a twelve plus y a twenty two plus b two Display style y equals x a underscore twelve plus y underscore twenty two plus b underscore two, where a equals eleven a twelve a twenty one a twenty two. Display style a equals begin p matrix a underscore eleven and a underscore twelve a underscore twenty one and a underscore twenty two end p matrix. Note the use of row vectors for point coordinates and that the matrix is written on the right. To be orthogonal, the matrix A must have orthogonal rows with same Euclidean length of one. That is, a eleven a twenty one plus a twelve a twenty two equals zero. Display style a underscore eleven a underscore twenty one plus a underscore twelve a underscore twenty two equals zero. And a eleven two plus a twelve two equals a twenty one two plus a twenty two two equals one. Display style a underscore eleven carrot two plus a underscore twelve carrot two equals a underscore twenty one carrot two plus a underscore twenty two carrot two equals one. This is equivalent to saying that a times its transpose must be the identity matrix. If these conditions do not hold, the formula describes a more general affine transformation of the plane provided that the determinant of a is not zero. The formula defines a translation if and only if a is the identity matrix. The transformation is a rotation around some point if and only if A is a rotation matrix, meaning that a 11 a 22 minus a 21 a 12 equals 1. Display style a underscore eleven a underscore twenty two a underscore twenty one a underscore twelve equals one. A reflection or glide reflection is obtained when a eleven a twenty two minus a twenty one a twelve equals minus one. Display style a underscore eleven a underscore twenty two a underscore twenty one a underscore twelve equals minus one. Assuming that translation is not used, transformations can be combined by simply multiplying the associated transformation matrices. Topic: <laughs> Affine transformation. Another way to represent coordinate transformations in Cartesian coordinates is through affine transformations. In affine transformations an extra dimension is added and all points are given a value of 1 for this extra dimension. The advantage of doing this is that point translations can be specified in the final column of matrix A in this way, all of the Euclidean transformations become transactable as matrix point multiplications. The affine transformation is given by a 11 21 b 1 a 12 a 22 b 2 0 0 1 x y 1 equals x y 
1 display style begin p matrix a underscore 11 and a underscore 21 and b underscore 1 a underscore 12 and a underscore 22 and b underscore 2 0 and 0 and 1 end p matrix begin p matrix x y 1 end p matrix equals begin p matrix x y 1 end p matrix note the matrix a from above was transposed the matrix is on the left and column vectors for point coordinates are used, using affine transformations multiple different Euclidean transformations including translation can be combined by simply multiplying the corresponding matrices. Topic. Scaling An example of an affine transformation which is not a Euclidean motion is given by scaling. To make a figure larger or smaller is equivalent to multiplying the Cartesian coordinates of every point by the same positive number m. If x, y are the coordinates of a point on the original figure, the corresponding point on the scaled figure has coordinates x, y equals m x m y. Display style x, y equals m x my. If m is greater than 1, the figure becomes larger, if m is between 0 and 1, it becomes smaller. Shearing A shearing transformation will push the top of a square sideways to form a parallelogram. Horizontal shearing is defined by x y equals x plus Y S Y display style x y equals x plus y s y. Shearing can also be applied vertically. X y equals x x s plus y display style x y equals x x s plus y. Topic. Orientation and handedness Topic. In two dimensions Fixing or choosing the x-axis determines the y-axis up to direction. Namely, the y-axis is necessarily the perpendicular to the x-axis through the point marked zero on the x-axis. But there is a choice of which of the two half lines on the perpendicular to designate as positive and which as negative. Each of these two choices determines a different orientation also called handedness of the Cartesian plane. The usual way of orienting the plane, with the positive x-axis pointing right and the positive y-axis pointing up and the x-axis being the first and the y-axis the second axis, is considered the positive or standard orientation, also called the right-handed orientation. A commonly used mnemonic for defining the positive orientation is the right-hand rule. Placing a somewhat closed right hand on the plane with the thumb pointing up, the fingers point from the x-axis to the y-axis, in a positively oriented coordinate system. The other way of orienting the plane is following the left-hand rule, placing the left hand on the plane with the thumb pointing up. When pointing the thumb away from the origin along an axis towards positive, the curvature of the fingers indicates a positive rotation along that axis. Regardless of the rule used to orient the plane, rotating the coordinate system will preserve the orientation. Switching any two axes will reverse the orientation, but switching both will leave the orientation unchanged. Topic: In 3 dimensions. Once the x and y axes are specified, they determine the line along which the z axis should lie, but there are two possible orientation for this line. The two possible coordinate systems which result are called right-handed and left-handed. The standard orientation, where the x-y plane is horizontal and the z axis points up and the x and the y axis form a positively oriented two-dimensional coordinate system in the x-y plane if observed from above the x-y plane is called right-handed or positive. The name derives from the right-hand rule. 
If the index finger of the right hand is pointed forward, the middle finger bent inward at a right angle to it, and the thumb placed at a right angle to both, the three fingers indicate the relative orientation of the x, y, and z axes in a right-handed system. The thumb indicates the x axis, the index finger the y axis and the middle finger the z axis. Conversely, if the same is done with the left hand, a left-handed system results. Figure 7 depicts a left and a right-handed coordinate system. Because a three-dimensional object is represented on the two-dimensional screen, distortion and ambiguity result. The axis pointing downward and to the right is also meant to point towards the observer, whereas the middle axis is meant to point away from the observer. The red circle is parallel to the horizontal xy plane and indicates rotation from the x-axis to the y-axis in both cases. Hence the red arrow passes in front of the z-axis. Figure 8 is another attempt at depicting a right-handed coordinate system. Again, there is an ambiguity caused by projecting the three-dimensional coordinate system into the plane. Many observers see figure 8 as flipping in and out between a convex cube and a concave corner. This corresponds to the two possible orientations of the space. Seeing the figure as convex gives a left-handed coordinate system. Thus the correct Way to view figure 8 is to imagine the x-axis as pointing towards the observer and thus seeing a concave corner. Topic. Representing a vector in the standard basis A point in space in a Cartesian coordinate system may also be represented by a position vector, which can be thought of as an arrow pointing from the origin of the coordinate system to the point. If the coordinates represent spatial positions displacements, it is common to represent the vector from the origin to the point of interest as r In two dimensions, the vector from the origin to the point with Cartesian coordinates x, y can be written as r equals x i plus y j Display style math bf r equals x math bf i plus y math bf j, where i equals one zero. Display style math bf i equals begin p matrix one zero end p matrix, and j equals zero one. Display style math bf j equals begin p matrix zero one end p matrix are unit vectors in the direction of the x axis and y axis respectively, generally referred to as the standard basis. In some application areas, these may also be referred to as versors. Similarly, in three dimensions, the vector from the origin to the point with Cartesian coordinates x, y, z. Display style x y z can be written as r equals x i plus y j plus z k display style math bf r equals x math bf i plus y math bf j plus z math bf k where k equals 0 0 1 display style math bf k equals begin p matrix 0 0 1 end p matrix is the unit vector in the direction of the z axis there is no natural interpretation of multiplying vectors to obtain another vector that works in all dimensions however there is a way to use complex numbers to provide such a multiplication in a two-dimensional Cartesian plane, identify the point with coordinates x, y with the complex number z equals x plus i y. Here, i is the imaginary unit and is identified with the point with coordinates 0, 1, so it is not the unit vector in the direction of the x-axis. Since the complex numbers can be multiplied giving another complex number, this identification provides a means to multiply vectors. In a three-dimensional Cartesian space a similar identification can be made with a subset of the quaternions. Applications 
equals Cartesian coordinates are an abstraction that have a multitude of possible applications in the real world. However, three constructive steps are involved in superimposing coordinates on a problem application. 1. Units of distance must be decided defining the spatial size represented by the numbers used as coordinates, 2. an origin must be assigned to a specific spatial location or landmark, and 3. the orientation of the axes must be defined using available directional cues for all but one axis. Consider as an example superimposing 3D Cartesian coordinates over all points on the Earth i.e. geospatial 3D. What units make sense? Kilometers are a good choice, since the original definition of the kilometer was geospatial 10,000 kilometers equaling the surface distance from the equator to the North Pole. Where to place the origin? Based on symmetry, the gravitational center of the Earth suggests a natural landmark which can be sensed via satellite orbits. Finally, how to orient X, Y and Z axis. The axis of Earth's spin provides a natural orientation strongly associated with up versus down. So positive Z can adopt the direction from geocenter to North Pole. A location on the equator is needed to define the x-axis, and the prime meridian stands out as a reference orientation, so the x-axis takes the orientation from geocenter out to 0 degrees longitude, 0 degrees latitude. Note that with three dimensions, and two perpendicular axes orientations pinned down for x and z, the y-axis is determined by the first two choices. In order to obey the right-hand rule, the y-axis must point out from the geocenter to 90 degrees longitude, 0 degrees latitude. So what are the geocentric coordinates of the Empire State Building in New York City? Using longitude. Topic. Minus 73.985656, latitude. 40. 748,433, Earth radius. Topic: 40,000 halves pi, and transforming from spherical to Cartesian coordinates, you can estimate the geocentric coordinates of the Empire State Building, x, y, z. 1330.53 kilometers minus 4635.75 kilometers 4155.46 kilometers GPS navigation relies on such geocentric coordinates In engineering projects agreement on the definition of coordinates is a crucial foundation one cannot assume that coordinates come predefined for a novel application, so knowledge of how to erect a coordinate system where there is none is essential to applying René Descartes' ingenious thinking. While spatial apps employ identical units along all axes, in business and scientific apps, each axis may have different units of measurement associated with it such as kilograms, seconds, pounds, etc. Although four and higher dimensional spaces are difficult to visualize, the algebra of Cartesian coordinates can be extended relatively easily to four or more variables, so that certain calculations involving many variables can be done. This sort of algebraic extension is what is used to define the geometry of higher dimensional spaces. Conversely, it is often helpful to use the geometry of Cartesian coordinates in two or three dimensions to visualize algebraic relationships between two or three of many non spatial variables. The graph of a function or relation is the set of all points satisfying that function or relation. For a function of one variable, f, the set of all points x, y, where y. Topic f x is the graph of the function f. For a function g of two variables, the set of all points x, y, z, where z. g x y is the graph of the function g a sketch of the graph of such a function or relation would consist of all the salient parts of the function or relation which would include its relative extrema its concavity and points of inflection any points of discontinuity and its end behavior all of these terms are more fully defined in calculus such graphs are useful in calculus to understand the nature and behavior of a function or relation See also Horizontal and vertical 
Jones diagram, which plots four variables rather than two Orthogonal coordinates Polar coordinate system Spherical coordinate system <laughs>